Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Yak and I'm going to show you guys how I installed my Nation's Wake Speed Alternator from Van Life Outfitters. To start off, I have a 2012 Ford Transit van and it's a 12 volt alternator. The first step is getting your manual and making sure that you have all the parts to do this installation. You are going to need to cut a belt for this installation, so you want to make sure that you have everything beforehand. And also compare your alternator to the alternator in the diagram, which is figure 11, so that you can see that it's oriented the same. If the alternator doesn't match the specifications, you might need to get an alternative mounting kit. You'll wanna know this ahead of time because if you install this incorrectly, you could damage components. So make sure you do that. And the next thing I did before proceeding was disconnecting my vehicle battery. This is just for safety. I wanted to make sure that my vehicle couldn't start while I was underneath working on it. The next step was removing the plastic shield underneath the vehicle. There are 10 screws underneath there. You will then release the tension on the automatic tensioner for the serpentine belt. To do this, put a wrench on the automatic tensioner and you're going to turn counterclockwise. This will release tension and allow you to slip the belt off. And I will say throughout this entire installation, this was one of the more difficult parts. It was such a tight squeeze that it was really hard to get a good video, but this diagram shows better where the belt is located. Next, you're going to locate the AC compressor belt and you will be cutting the belt on this one and discarding it. Now we are officially committed to this project. There are three bolts on the AC compressor. The top one is hardly visible and the other two are visible. So take all three of those off. I'm using a 13 millimeter wrench. I got a breaker bar and I was able to break it loose. Thankfully, the third bolt, the, t the highest one, is basically invisible from here. There we go. And make sure you save those bolts because you will be using them again later. When you're doing this, make sure you don't disconnect the harness or pipes and get some zip ties so that you can zip tie the AC compressor out of the way. So for the zip tie, I hooked it over the exhaust manifold. You don't wanna put any stress on the pipes or the wiring connections. So I zip tied that out of the way, put it to the side so I can continue on with those next steps. For the next step, I removed the nut securing the electrical harness carrier and I unclipped the carrier from its mounting. Once the carrier was dismounted, I removed and discarded the fastener from the oil pan. I also removed and discarded the wiring harness support for the harness and moved the conduit, which will provide clearance for the bracket we will install later. I installed the mounting bracket using the provided M8 by 70 bolt and M8 by 50 bolt. I also added the M10 by 50 bolt and M8 by 40 bolt. I have the mounting bracket here and I'm going to put it up and I'm gonna put never seize on it as well so that it doesn't bind if I ever need to service it in the future. I hand tightened all the bolts and then I tightened it with a ratcheting wrench and once I got it tight with that, I went in with a Torx wrench to torque it to spec. So I just torqued the bottom three bolts for 21.4 and now we're going to do the one that's really hard to reach so wish me luck <laughs> the bottom three bolts are 13 millimeters on the socket wrench and then for the top one it's 15. next you're going to fit the ac compressor back in its place using those three bolts that you set aside earlier i zip tied the ac compressor up so that it was out of the way while i was doing that last bolt that was really hard to get to but now i'm going to put it back in with these three Bolts. I'm going to put some never seize on these as well, but I'm just going to cut the zip tie first. For the never seize, I'm just doing a tiny bit on the end. And as I screw it in, it'll coat everything. Now I got them all hand tightened and I'm going to come in with this socket wrench and it'll be a lot easier to tighten it. So we'll do that for all of them. I'm going to use the torque wrench and we are going to torque it down to 18 foot pounds. Next, you're going to take the belt tensioner that came in your kit and you will fit it onto the bracket using two M8 by 50 bolts. You will torque these bolts to 21.4 foot pounds. 
I just put the belt tensioner in. I use a 13 millimeter socket and I am now going to torque it. And the torque specs are 21.4. Okay. So for the top bolt on the belt tensioner, my wrench was hitting this black part. So I just had to use a deep socket and that's now torqued to spec. So we can move on to the next step. Next, you're gonna take the harness carrier support that came in your kit and you will install it to the bracket using an M8 by 12 cap screw. Torque this bolt to 18 foot pounds after tightening it by hand. Now you will install the harness carrier plate to the oil pan at the point shown using the M6 by 16 bolt and nut that came in your kit. Fit the harness carrier to the bracket using one M8 by 20 bolt with a nut and you will clip the carrier into the plate. It is now almost time to install your secondary alternator, but before you do, you are going to need to add the rear mounting plate. To do this, you will be using two M10 by 20 bolts. Torque these bolts to 37 foot pounds after tightening it by hand. I'm using the rear mounting plate. I know it's the rear mounting plate because it has this tab, which I am orienting on the bottom, and I'm putting it up on this left side here. All right, so I'm setting this to 37 foot-pounds, and that is how much we are going to torque this rear bracket to. I had to use this claw foot because nothing else was working, not even a short socket. I got those torqued to spec, and now I'm going to put the secondary alternator in. For this step, I had my alternator on the table, and I loosely assembled the plate with spacers onto the alternator. You're gonna need to hold everything together and bring it over to your vehicle to lift it up and install it. This can be kind of difficult with one person because it is actually quite heavy. I'm gonna add a little bit of never seize on these bolts before I put it up there and then we're ready. Okay, I'm holding everything so it doesn't fall out, hopefully, when I'm doing this. Once you get a couple bolts in, you can make sure everything else is aligned and begin fitting the bolts through the plate and spacers to the bracket. Check that all of your spacers are correctly positioned and then tighten your bolts and torque them to 37 foot-pounds. All the bolts for the secondary alternator are 15 millimeter and for the front two, I used this claw foot. And then for the top one, I just had to kind of weasel my um, soccer wrench in there and it worked out. At this point, you finish your secondary alternator installation and the last thing to do is to add that belt that you took off in the very beginning of this installation back on. This was actually pretty tricky to do and I experimented with different ways of how to get this belt on until eventually managing. I'm installing the belt for the alternator. It's going to go around the crank pulley, the OEM, AC compressor, the alternator, and the automatic tensioner. I put the belt over everything except the tensioner for now and then I have this breaker bar. It's a small one and I cut this PVC piping to put over it and I can put it on the frame of this car so that I don't have to hold it up while I put the belt on the tensioner. When you do this, also make sure that the belt is on the grooves closest to the alternator. So now that I put the belt back on, everything is done, and the last thing I need to do is put the serpentine belt on, which is the first belt we took off. It was in a bit of a tricky area, so this might be difficult, but let's squeeze in and do it. It was pretty tricky to get the serpentine belt back on, but I was able to do it with a 15 millimeter wrench on the belt tensioner and I stacked it with another wrench, wedged it in here. I put the belt on all of the pulleys except for the main crankshaft and for that one, I started at the top and then slowly went around to put the bottom on and I was finally able to do it. So those are the wrenches stacked there on the belt tensioner. So the next step to this installation is wiring. I used four aught cable for this and I crimped lugs onto it and then I connected it to the secondary alternator. These are the cables that will connect to the house batteries through a shunt and a fuse, so you're gonna have to run them to the back of your vehicle. To do this, I used stainless steel clamps and I wrapped my wire in loom to protect it. I made sure not to get too close to the catalytic converter, to the muffler, or to my front tire because I didn't want anything to get too hot around it and I also didn't want my tire to rub on it. And then when I got to the back of the vehicle, I ran it through this pillar here. There's a plastic tab, you can just pop that out, run it up, and now it's on the inside of your vehicle. For me, my electrical system's back here, but you may do this differently depending on where your electrical system is. I've been using these stainless steel hose clamps around the wire. I'm just lining it up and getting it started by hand. <laughs>
I'm going to give you guys a little tour of where I routed all of the wire underneath my 2021 Ford Transit extended van. Starting here at the alternator, I brought the wire over with zip ties and I zip tied it onto the frame of the vehicle right here. Then I went over into the wheel well for the tire. And this is a tricky spot, probably the most tricky spot of where I wired it because there are moments where the tire gets really close to hitting. So I did a lot of different tests and this location, it does not hit. So I routed it out here into the wheel well and I got this aluminum frame. I bent it because there wasn't a lot of mounting points. So I bent it in this U shape to secure it there. The reason why I had to put it in the wheel well is because the catalytic converter is the only other option and I didn't want it to get so close because it would be really hot, obviously. So I put it in through here, triple checked that the wheel does not hit it. Once I got past the wheel well, I tried to stay as far away from the muffler as possible because this is obviously gonna get really hot. And I used stainless steel hose clamps to mount it up here with self-drilling metal screws on the side here. Then I angled it back in closer to the muffler over here, kind of because I had to. I have now finished with the wire. The loom is up. And the next step is taking this cable for the wake speed and we are going to put it in between the four out wire. I connected the alternator temperature sensor and crimped the blue wire to the field wire on the alternator. I cut it and sealed off the yellow wire because we won't be using that. And when I was done, I zip tied everything so it was out of the way. Okay, that looks good. I'm using this self-fusing silicone rubber tape and I cut the yellow wire back so I'm just gonna wrap around all of it so it stays in place and then we're done with the wiring. So I went a couple times individually around the yellow and sealed the end so no moisture got in. And then I just went around the black and the blue wire so that it doesn't flop around. I have a little bit of excess, so I'm gonna just have to coil this up somewhere and zip tie it. Then I ran my engine for 10 minutes to test the alternator. At this point, I don't have anything hooked up in the back. I just wanted to make sure that it ran well mechanically and it did. So then I put the plastic shield back up with the 10 screws that I set aside in the beginning of this installation. And I lowered my vehicle off the lift because everything else we'll be doing is back here in the electrical system. The next step is hooking up my four out cables to the electrical system on the inside of my van. I put my shunt on the positive side with a 300 amp fuse for my Victron Lynx distributor. The positive four out wire first connects to the smart shunt and the four aught negative wire connects to the empty spot in my Lynx distributor. Then I made a cable connecting the empty side of the smart shunt to the Lynx distributor, and I added the 300 amp mega fuse. I already had a relay connected to the engine run signal, which connects to ground when the engine is running. The wake speed needs to see 12 volts when the engine is running, so I used a set of normally open contacts on the 12 volt relay to pull the brown wake speed wire to 12 volts when the engine is running. On the wake speed, the black wire goes to the negative distribution bus bar. The red wire is the regulator positive power and it connects through a 15 amp inline fuse to the alternator side of the 300 amp fuse that's in the links. The purple wire from the wake speed goes through a 5 amp inline fuse to the alternator side of the shunt. And the gray wire from the wake speed goes through a 5 amp inline fuse to the links fuse side of the shunt. In my application, I didn't use the white feature in wire. When I finished wiring everything up on the inside of my van, I tested the secondary alternator once again, and it is working very well. I'm very excited with this addition to my van. And I would say that the installation actually was not as hard as I thought it would be. And there were some tight spaces, but overall I would say it was very achievable to do. Thankfully, the manual was very clear and obviously Van Life Outfitters customer service is always really awesome if you have any questions. Hopefully this installation video helped. And if you have any questions, leave them down below.